What's up guys, back in with another video. Today we're going to take a look at the arcade wiring standard that revolutionized arcade gaming in the 80s and 90s, JAMA. In the early 80s, most arcade PCBs, harnesses and power supplies were custom built. When an old game became unprofitable, or if a new game was introduced that wasn't making any money, the arcade operators would typically seek to replace the cabinet. Generally speaking, the operator had two options. The first one was to haul the cabinet away and get a replacement. This was a pretty expensive process and very time consuming, sometimes taking up to weeks and sometimes even months for a new game to arrive on the shop floor. Not a very good option. The second option was to rewire the cabinet and update the artwork in order to put different games into the cabinet. This was certainly the preferred option, but it still took a lot of time, especially rewiring some PCBs was a very time consuming process, not to mention the marquee and artwork replacement need to be done as well. This is where the JAMA wiring standard comes in. JAMA, which stands for Japan Amusement Machinery Manufacturers Association, is a conglomeration of various representatives from different arcade video game manufacturers that included Namco, Sega, Taito, Tecmo, Capcom, and Atlas. And there was also a couple of others as well. First introduced in 1985, arcade cabinets wired to JAMA can be made to play all games built to this standard simply by installing the circuit board or PCB for that particular game. When it was time to replace the game, rather than hauling away the arcade cabinet or having to painstakingly rewire the harness, all that was needed was the arcade PCB itself was replaced with the new one. JAMA is essentially a plug and play solution for the arcade industry that made operators around the world breathe a sigh of relief. Let's take a look at the technical side of the JAMA standard. Now in this video previously I already mentioned something called the JAMA harness. The JAMA harness is the wiring interface between the arcade PCB and the arcade cabinet. Each of the 56 pins on the jammer harness have different pieces of functionality. They provide power, usually 5 volts for the game and 12 volts for the sound, inputs for two joysticks, each with three action buttons and one start button, analog RGB video with negative composite sync, single speaker output and inputs for coin, service and test. Looking closer at the pinouts, we notice there's three buttons per joystick. But what about the situations where there's more buttons on the game? For example, Street Fighter, which has a six button layout. Now you may be thinking, what about pin 25 and 26? Can't they be used as buttons? Well, they're typically ignored in favor of something called a kick harness. A kick harness is the extension over the original JAMA standard, which provides three buttons per player, two joysticks, and two additional start buttons. Now the different arcade manufacturers had their own variations of the kick harness, but in most cases it was to use to extend the game's control to allow six buttons per player. The three buttons on the JAMA PCB were typically the punch buttons, and the term kick harness was dubbed because the three additional buttons for fighting games were usually kick buttons only. By 1990, JAMA had become the de facto standard of PCBs worldwide. Now one of the questions that hasn't really been answered in this video so far is, what about if you're interested in a PCB that's before 1985 that's not wired for JAMA? How do you kind of get around that? Well typically you'll need something like this, which is a JAMA adapter. And uh, this one is a JAMA adapter for an IRM type board, uh, specifically for things like Kung Fu Master and there's a couple of other games that, that use the standard. So all this is essentially doing is taking the pinouts from the PCB itself and converting it with these wires to the JAMA standard. And depending on your skill level, these are pretty easy to make and there's a lot of documentation on the internet. Now, if you're not really that comfortable with a soldering iron, there's a lot of different websites that will either have these for sale that are pre-built or they'll make them for you. So obviously JAMA was a very important part of arcade history. And a lot of us really wouldn't be in the hobby if it wasn't for JAMA. And by that what I mean is, the JAMA standard has made it very accessible for the common person to get involved in the arcade hobby. All you really need is an arcade cabinet that's wired for JAMA, something like this, Capcom Mini Q candy cabinet, and you can swap in and out PCBs as you need. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of the JAMA standard. As always, if you like my stuff, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Bye for now.